In this tutorial you will learn how to take out, clean, verify and then reinstall a fuel pump and vapor separator from an Ibinul E-Tech 15HO to 30HP. So this tutorial is made of three main sections. First of all, we're going to see the different steps to take out the pump from the engine. Then we're going to have a closer look inside it and see how we can clean it and repair it. And finally, I am going to show you how to reinstall the pump back on the engine. Let's do it. First, using an 8mm or 5 16 inch socket, take out the 9 bolt holding the port cover. Use a cutting plier and break the clamp holding the fuel line to the male plug and remove the hose from it. Now locate the screw holding the oil tank. Using the same socket, remove the screw. Watch out for the washer it will probably stay on the tank and fall out once you remove it. Then, gently pull the tank to separate it from the block. This will allow you to have more room to work on the fuel pump. Remove the tie strap holding the water hoses and the vat hose. Break the clamp on the fuel intake, for some reason this engine doesn't have a clamp. Remove all hoses and disconnect the connector. Now, remove the connector clips from the fuel body. There is one on injector 1. and another one on injector 2. Now, using the same socket, remove the three screws holding the pump. Now that nothing is holding the pump anymore, gently pull it to remove it. Okay, great job taking out the pump. Now let's have a closer look inside. All right, now that you have taken out your fuel pump and vapor separator from your engine, let's talk a bit about it. So this part is one of the main components of your Evinul E-Tech as it has three main roles. The first role of this pump is to provide fuel to your injector and this fuel must be pressured at 28 to 32 psi so inside this pump there is an electric motor that works on 12 volt and that provides pressurized fuel to your injector rails the second role of this pump is to separate the fuel vapor from the fuel itself we're going to see a bit later in this tutorial what is the mechanism inside this pump that separates the vapor from the liquid, how it can be a problem for the engine and how we can fix it. And the last role of this pump is to cool down the fuel. It incorporates a system where the fresh water come inside the pump, cool down the fuel and get out of it. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the most common issues you can have with a fuel pump and vapor separator on a 15HO to 30HP ABD tech. So the first most common issue is the electric pumps inside that stop working. There are many reasons why this pump will stop working and we're gonna see each one of them. The second most common issue is dirt inside the pump. We're gonna see how to clean it. Finally, the third issue is the air vent that is plugged, preventing the fuel to be primed to the pump. All right, let's start using some tools and dismantle it. Okay, first we're gonna see how to clean it, then we're gonna look at the air vent problem, and finally we're gonna concentrate on the electric pump inside. 
Okay, the first thing to do is to remove the four Torx screws to take out the top cap. Don't forget to keep all the parts in one single place. All right, now you can take out the top cap, but be very careful as uh, the pump might be full of fuel. If you take out the cap while the pump is like that, all the fuel will spill on the table. Use a small flat screwdriver and carefully insert the screwdriver in the screw holes and twist it. There is a big o-ring on the top cap, that's why it's a bit difficult to take it out. So carefully lift it. There we go. Now with your hand, just twist it a bit and lift it. There we go. So this is the event system I was talking earlier. We're going to see that uh, in the next phase of this video. As you see, the pump is full of fuel. Just take everything out, then we'll continue. Okay, now that you have taken out all the fuel from the pump, I want to explain you something before going forward. So basically, this pump is providing fuel to your injector rails. So the fuel that goes into the rails comes from these two holes. So the fuel goes into the rails, goes to the injectors, some of it are injected into the cylinder, and the surplus of fuel is going back into the pump to these holes. So this is the fuel intake, this is the fuel outtake. So it's important for you to understand that because uh, we're gonna see that there is a little filter that filters the fuel from the injectors to the pump that we want to be clean. So basically there is a little hose there routing the fuel from here to the bottom of the pump. So when the fuel comes back from the injector to the pump, it needs to keep some pressure into the fuel rails. It needs to keep at least 28 or 32 psi. So there is a non-return valve inside there. So basically, this valve is situated here. So the fuel that comes back from the injector is filtered by this filter and then there is a non-return inside this assembly and then the fuel is redistributed into the pump in order to be sent to the injector once again. So we will see this non-return valve, so carefully remove this plastic thing. Be careful as there are some small parts and some small springs inside, you don't want to lose that. There we go. there is a grey thing inside and a spring so this is the non-return valve okay it's a good thing you can check that because this little part is very very important to the engine this is what keeps pressure into your injector rails if uh, this little rubber thing is damaged or the spring is too loose you will have a poor performance on your engine i like to take this two out if you pull on the on the bronze part carefully you will be able to separate the plastic from the bronze and then you can take the spring out what i like to do sometimes is just to stretch a bit the spring in order to be sure that my that my injector rails are supplied with good pressure so once you have stretched it a bit you can place it back here there we go and then just press it click once you're done with that, just put it on the side and let's continue cleaning the filters. There you go. So make sure this filter is clean. As you see, it will be dirty on the outside because the fuel is coming from the outside to the inside. Once you have done that, you can take back this little uh, non-return part and place it back into this uh, assembly. Take the hose there and the hose back press it here we go now we know this is fine okay now we're gonna clean the second filter of this pump 
To do that, you will have to remove the electric pump from the body. There are two torque screws, one here and another one there. Just take both out. You are about to take out this plastic cap that is holding the electric pump inside. So be very careful because I don't want you to break any wire there. So you will need to take out this little rubber protection there. You can take it out with your hands. There we go. Then you will need to pull gently on the red and black wire in order to give you some room when you will take out this cap. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, now you can take a long nose plier to hold this plastic thing and then you're gonna pull it gently to take the pump out. All right, now that you have taken out the electric pump from the body, you can look for the other filter. You can see it inside. Take a long nose plier and look for it. Let's put it gently. There we go. Okay, so this is a filter that filters fuel sucked by the pump to distribute it to the injectors. If this is dirty, the fuel flow will be affected. Make sure this is clean. You can use either an air compressor to clean it or just uh, a little brush, but make sure this is clean before reinstalling it to the pump. Okay, so let's move into the second issue. So basically, this mechanism here is to let the fuel feel the pump. So when the cap is on that and you prime your primer bulb, your fuel comes through the leaf pump, then goes into the pump through this hole. When the float is like that, therefore there is no fuel inside the pump, it lets the fuel enter the water separator. And then when it's being filled, close this door here and then no more fuel can come inside. Okay, so sometimes what, um, what can happen is that this passage here is plugged with some dirt, therefore the fuel can't go in. This is very easy to clean, uh, just follow these different steps. So as you can see, there's a little pin here that you can remove with your hand, just Press it here and then remove there by holding the float. Up. Keep it on the side. Then carefully lift the float. And you will see a little plunger attached to it where you can take it out very easily. So the fuel goes in there as explained. And then when the pump is empty, it comes through that hole. I don't know if you see it, I don't know if you see it, but the hole inside is very thin, very small, and like a little dirt can plug it. Just blow into that uh, hole there to see if everything is clean. Okay, so before reassembling the float and the plunger, let's have a look at the non-return valve that takes out the air from the uh, body. So basically it's uh, there is a non-return valve inside the plastic there. It's a uh, non-serviceable unfortunately. So if it's broken uh, you can't do anything. You have to replace the pump. However what you can do is to make sure uh, the air can exit the body. To do that you can suck the air through this little hole here. If you can suck it therefore there's nothing restraining it. It's a little bit hard to suck it, that's normal, but as long as the air is going out, everything is fine. Okay, let's take everything to normal by reinserting the plunger and the float. 
First of all, take this little plunger and slide it to the float, like that. There we go. Then insert the plunger inside the um, little hole. And slide the little pin back to its position. It's very easy. Just slide it like that. Oh. Okay, now we are done with that. Okay, so the third issue I want to explain to you is uh, the possibility of this electric pump to stop working. If this is not working, obviously uh, your injectors won't be supplied with fuel. There are many reasons why this may not work. The first one is, as you can see on this pump, the red wire is broken on the edge there. So it's nearly impossible to weld it back where it is exactly. Sometimes you can. If you can, uh, you are fortunate enough to try. If you cannot, uh, you would have to replace uh, the, the wall assembly. Now, you can indeed push this little part inside there to remove this assembly and try to, to access more of, uh, of the wire part inside there. I don't recommend that. If you want to try it, you can. But uh, if it's broken on the edge, I'd rather uh, not do nothing and replace the pump. Then you can see here that there is two uh, copper uh, thing where the wires are rooted. Sometimes I've seen some pumps that has uh, wires broken at this area. It's pretty easy to weld it. You can send the pump to an electrician that uh, has experience on, on these kind of issues. I'm sure you can uh, weld these, uh, these wires easily. And the third wire issue can be one of the two pin from the connector has come loose from its barb. To know that is pretty simple. If you can take one from the connector, you know that one of the wires was loose. Lastly, I've seen a lot of this electric pump uh, stop working simply because it uh, sucked some dirt and locked the mechanism inside or there was some water in fuel and stayed in the pump for a while, therefore it oxidated inside. So to fix this electric pump, unfortunately you don't have a lot of options as this is a non-serviceable part, you can't uh, dismantle it without breaking it. However, what I can advise is you plunge it into a bowl with penetrating liquid for a night and then you put some 12 volt power to the pump and give it a few shocks. By doing this you can break the oxidation or the dirt that's inside to free uh, the little propeller inside and uh, make the pump work again. Unless you can find this pump somewhere, uh, unless you can find it and replace it, I would advise you to replace the fuel pump and the perspirator as a well. All right, now that you have diagnosed and cleaned your fuel pump, you are ready to reassemble it. So the first thing is to make sure this filter is clean, as said before, and reinsert it inside the pump. You will see that this triangular shape is the same here. There we go, just make sure it's at the bottom completely. Then take the pump and reinsert it. You see that there is a little nipple here that needs to go in uh, that hole there, I don't know if you see it, where there is a little herring. Make sure this herring is here, it's a brown one normally. Just place the pump back, squeeze it a bit. There we go, just press a bit on it. Now that it's in place, you can put the first torque screw and tighten it back. Okay, to install the second screw, which is uh, at the back here, just use uh, this little tip I'm gonna show you. Just a bit of tape. Here we go. So the screw is um, stuck to the screwdriver. Let's 
screw it back. Don't forget to take back the tape. You can reinsert both wires in a little hole. Don't forget to place back the little rubber thing separating the two wires. There we go. Nice and easy. All right, you are now ready to reinstall the top cap on the fuel body. This is a pretty easy thing to do, just follow these different steps. So the first thing to do is to make sure this little o-ring, this little uh, seal is present. It can be either on the stainless steel part or on the top cap. I prefer, I prefer it to be inserted on the top cap already. It's, it will be much more easier when you will install the cap back. So the first thing to do is to align this stainless steel thing, which is the cooling hose, to the seal here. So here, align it first, there we go. When you know it's aligned, just press it gently until it closes completely. Now simply take the four Torx screws and re insert them into their holes and tighten them back. Okay, we are now ready to reinstall the new or repaired fuel pump and depot separator on the engine. Now follow the different steps I am going to show you. Okay, the first thing is to locate the four fuel holes on the pump and on the injectors. Make sure all the four black seals are there. Align the pump and gently give a few shocks until it fits tightly. Reinstall the three screws holding the pump and don't forget the washers. Reinstall the water hoses. The vat hose. And reconnect the connector. Insert both connectors clip to the fuel body. If you don't have a 14 mm optical clamp, Simply use a jubilee clip to tie the fuel intake hose. Then use tie straps on the water hoses. And the vat hose. Tie strap the fuel filter to the pump. Once done, cut everything clean. To reinstall the oil tank, slide the black grommets to the two guides. To screw the bolt holding the tank, first position the washer.
Use a tape to hold the screw to the socket. And tighten the oil tank. Place the cover in position. You can close the latch to hold it. Then tighten the nine screws firmly but not too much. If you tighten them too much, it can break the plastic over time. Use another jubilee clip to tighten the fuel hose to the male plug. I hope that this tutorial helped you in the process of fixing your engine. If you consider I have missed something, please write it on the comments. I will be happy to take your feedback as a contribution to this lecture. Now, if you have fixed your engine, well done. If you have not, don't worry. Simply follow the next step I am providing you on the flowchart of its course.